The fight against climate change centered on Bedford this week, where developers are planning a massive half a million square foot expansion to Hascom Airfield. Now, the proposal would build 27 new jet hangars at the airfield, which is publicly owned but holds the most private jets in New England and would require the removal of dozens of acres of mature trees nearby. Now, protesters rallied outside the State House earlier this week to oppose the expansion as advocates and lawmakers urged Governor Mara Haley to step in. Joining me today uh, is State Senator Michael Barrett of Lexington. He is among the opposers. And joining me along is Chuck Collins, Director of the Program on Inequality and the Common Good at the Institute for Policy Studies, who, has, who did a report, which you want to get into the key findings. But first of all, gentlemen, thank you for, for stopping by. Um, Happy we, to be here. We've got some good time here to kind of let folks know what's going on. But Senator Barrett, tell us who's opposed why, and why you're opposed. Yeah. Well, I am the Senate chair of the Massachusetts Legislature's Climate Committee. So I uh, worry about these things uh, on an appointment of the Senate president all the time. Uh, this thing is the most single most polluting construction project proposed for Massachusetts, and it happens to be two miles from my house. So this is uh, of interest to everyone because these jets will cancel out the kinds of steps we're asking citizens to take to deal with climate change. A, a, a handful of rich people can do uh, as much damage as a million of us can do good. All right. So, so before we get to Chuck in, in the study, explain that a little more, because folks who don't know, what is this hang? What are these hangers going to be storing uh, and who are these people that is yeah. going to be benefiting? Uh, these are the super rich and um, these are essentially garages for their privately owned jets. These are folks who could be flying first class on commercial aircraft in the company of all of us. Uh, and uh, while that's a problem, it's, it's a problem that we all deal with. These folks say, no, I want to fly to Nantucket. I want to fly to Martha's Vineyard. I want to fly to uh, Long Island uh, or to the Bahamas uh, in a way that, that pollutes more than any other okay. form of transportation that exists really in the world. That's what I was going to say. What's wrong with that? And I want to go with Chuck because he's going to tell us what he found in the study. So what's wrong with that, Chuck, if I want to park my jet, which I don't have yet, um, there and some of my friends? Uh, what's wrong with that? What did you find? Well, what we know is that we, the public, subsidize the private jet travel of the ultra-rich. We subsidize it because of these emissions that they're dumping into the air. 10 to 20 times more than the ordinary passenger. We also subsidize their use of the airspace. You know, one out of six flights is a private flight, but they only chip in 2% of the actual uh, costs of the airspace. But in the case of, case of Hanscom, our study looked at who's really using it right now. And we're really talking about uh, the, the region's billionaires, multimillionaires, folks who have other resources and access to other options in terms of transportation, uh, but they're burning up the atmosphere uh, at uh, flying not to business destinations. We found half of these flights, probably more, go to luxury and recreation destinations. Hanscom to Nantucket, Hanscom to Teterboro, the Bahamas, West Palm Beach, so, so Aspen, you get the idea. Yeah, places that they can easily reach using the planes that you and I reach, the flights, right? Easily. And in the case of most of these New England flights, there's other, you know, there's excellent train service, first class train service, uh, ferries, high speed ferries to Nantucket. There are other low emissions options. But, but, but wasn't the part of the reason of the expansion actually to try and cut down on private jet emissions? That's what I had heard and read is the intent or supposedly yeah. what... Yeah, the there's a, listen, Massport is a public agency. They're ultimately, ultimately accountable to elected representatives. So they're, they, they're advancing some climate issues. I've taken a look at their arguments. Remember, I have to worry about climate policy on behalf of the 40 members of the state Senate. I am unconvinced by their rationale. They are going to pollute, you know, only four passengers on average travel in one of these private jets on a given flight. So we're talking about planes that carry vanishingly few people, all of them super rich, and they pollute, to Chuck's point, 10 or 20 times more than a passenger on a regular commercial airline. All right, well, Chuck, it kind of doesn't make sense, right? The whole world is talking about climate change right. and preserving this. How do they even get to this point? Who's behind this? Who's, who's, you know, 
Who are the proponents of doing this? Well, if you think about it, who flies a private jet? The median wealth of a private jet owner is $190 million. Uh, in Massachusetts, we're talking about John Fish, Herb Chambers, John Childs, the CEOs of Reebok and, and uh, uh, New Balance. These are all billionaires. They are among the most powerful people on the planet. So we have to push back and say, don't expand private jet operations at Hanscom or Logan on a warming planet when you have other choices and other options. Yeah. And, and let, let me just say, because Chuck's absolutely right, uh, these are decent human beings in many cases. They're doing a very bad thing in terms of the interests of the rest of us. So we're pleading with them to fly first class uh, and to leave these private jets alone. Massport is one of the interested parties here. They see an opportunity to cater to the super rich and make a little money in the process. That's a public agency. They're responsible for the greater public interest as well. And as I say, they're canceling out the hard work that we're asking our constituents to do to deal with climate change every day. Insulate your house. Buy an EV. Think about a heat pump. A uh, handful of people are going to neutralize the efforts of a hundred thousand of us. So who, who can who can stop this? Who, who, who? Well, uh, there's a board of directors for Massport, which operates Logan as well as Hanscom, right? Uh, now, this is a Charlie Baker board at the moment because their terms don't end when a given governor's mm -hmm. term ends. But I'm a state senator, and my colleagues and I are directing a, a request to this board to do the right thing and to ignore the short-term profitable profit possibilities. Uh, other elected officials, the governor needs to join us to ask them to do the right thing. All of us can increase the pressure. And I'll tell you, if Massport goes ahead... It will suffer more reputational damage in terms of its long-term interests, in terms of its ability, for example, to make a case to the legislature for help on another question. They'll do more damage to themselves than they can profit, uh, possibly profit by in the short term. What role has the community played? What is the surrounding community? You said you live two miles from there, but I've seen there's been public hearings and they're more scheduled. Yeah. What, is the, what are the people around well, saying? Uh, people are very, very upset. Uh, we had a rally in the State House on Monday. Uh, I spoke, Chuck spoke. But perhaps more importantly, residents of the area spoke. And I'll tell you, they're building a coalition which goes beyond Concord, Lincoln, Lexington, and Bedford, the four immediately adjoining towns. All of us want to make sure that these jets don't cancel out the climate policies of the entire state of Massachusetts. So we're building a statewide movement. This is going to be bigger than Massport realizes, I think. This is building very powerfully. Now, I imagine, Chuck, you're report is going to be the cornerstone of your argument, right? You've got data. That, give me some highlights. Give me three highlights of, the, of your key findings that align with what the senator is saying. Yeah, well, one is that 10% uh, of the frequent flyers, the top 20 frequent flyers out of Hanscom, burn 14% of all the emissions. So we're talking about very wealthy people who are flying almost every other day. Uh, half the destinations to luxury recreation destinations, 41% of the flights less than an hour, 14% less than half an hour. These are regional uh, destinations, Martha's Vineyard, the Hamptons. Basically, we shouldn't blow up in this moment. We shouldn't blow off a carbon emissions bomb when the rest of the society is dialing back its emissions. Yeah. And, and just to, to add to Chuck's point, that's what we have to understand. This is not a, a necessary step to encourage economic development in Massachusetts. I'm very concerned about jobs. I live out on Route 128. We've got a thriving life sciences business, financial services business, tech business. This isn't about that. This is about an, a very large proportion of flights, essentially to avoid the inconvenience of routine travel that the rest of us endure. This is unnecessary travel, and Massport is on the cusp of aiding and abetting it for short-term income when it really has a public responsibility to all of us. When you say it's at, at the cusp, what do you mean? What's the time frame? Well, they can What's pull back. Happen? This is not a done deal. Okay. Uh, we're not wasting our time here. Listen, um, Massport hasn't signed on the dotted line, and I'm old enough, and a lot of Bostonians are, to remember the fight against the inner belt, which was going to carve up neighborhoods in Brookline, Boston, Cambridge, Somerville. Highway construction in the 1970s was inevitable, couldn't be stopped until it could be. 
things turned on a dime. A governor named Frank Sargent said no to the inner belt. We're asking Massport to channel its inner Frank Sargent and to say no to this project, and it can do so. What, what role can the governor play other than, you know, take advantage of her pull? But, uh, well, that, you know. that, well, that's a powerful role. Uh, she's in the position that I'm in. She can marshal evidence. She can work with folks uh, in the private sector like the Institute for Policy Studies. She can help us build a case. She doesn't have the power to say no, but... Uh, she is, and I think she's inclined to be on the right side, which is to recognize that this is not core economic development. This is frivolous, and it needs to be stopped. Mm. Strong words. Chuck, you agree? I'm, I, I'm with the senator. I hope uh, Governor Healy uh, does the right thing. We should realize this isn't a NIMBY issue. You know, as, as, as a Bostonian, uh, someone who cares a lot about East Boston, we don't want to see accelerated private jet travel in East Boston. Or anywhere. That's right. And we've been, that's, uh, he, he makes a good point. We are making common cause with city neighborhoods who don't want to see these wasteful private jets flying in their area either. Mm -hmm. There's a movement here between city people and suburban people, between folks who are just concerned about the planet burning up. This is an opportunity for everyone in Massachusetts to do something about it. And we will be probably hearing more about this um, in the coming weeks. Fair to say? Fair to say? Fair to say. Very right. much. Well, I thank you for coming on the show and uh, bringing, us, bringing us up to speed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alberto. Thank you.